Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Well, this bit is Quadalis, which is presumably the female was out and about earlier and the shedding was already here uh, but which was up front and it was going to offer something to eat uh, which she's she's now in her hut uh, I located her in her hut before I opened the glass um, so I don't know if she's going to poke her head out but uh, I will definitely poke this in the doorway of the hut and see if it will cause any reaction. Apparently not, so we're just going to leave that there. <clears throat> However, the other one is here in front. Well, that was uh, shake and bake time, huh? You're gonna have trouble eating it by folding <laughs> it in half. You you do have a eating problem there. So again, this is Bitis quadalis. It's one of the six or seven different dwarf Bitis species. Uh, they're co always quite variable and beautiful, and and certainly easier to house and care for than the adult uh, large Bittus uh, group uh, like rhino viper, like uh, uh, gaboon vipers, parviocula, uh, puff adders, puff adders. They're, they're much easier to work with uh, because they're diminutive. That however does not mean that they can't put you in a world of hurt. Um, they have all the niceties that all the large species have as far as venom components, uh, hemorrhagins, cytotoxins, necrotoxins. Um, you're guaranteed to lose a little chunk of uh, tissue, maybe a fingertip if you get bit in the fingertip. Uh, um, probably not uh, going to lose your life, although you will wish that you were dead for uh, several days. Uh, um, none of the antivenins currently work very well on their venom, and since they're such small species and don't factor into a medically significant bite, there's no specific antivenin that they created for, because antivenins uh, costs a lot of money to create and get licensed and get out there uh, um, for a few bites a year and bites that really don't take a, a large amount of uh, medical care to uh, uh, to care for the patient just probably 24 hours observation and some wound care thereafter and you're good to go You're going to sort of drag that around until uh, you've decided that you have it in a position that you can work with it. But from my point of view, there is no position that you can work with that in. She's going to need to drop that and try again. But probably won't. <clears throat> probably They're won't. Very stubborn. You can see the cute little uh, horns on the top of her their head. That's why they're called horn adders, uh, obviously. It's like Okay, who's buried in Grant's tomb? Yes, General Grant. <laughs> well, these are called horn adders for a reason, and that reason is they've got horns. All right, we'll let you do your thing, and uh, we won't embarrass you by filming the whole struggle to eat that morsel. It looks like you got it stuck in your mouth, you know, like, you know, in the old uh, cartoons where they stick a, put a stick in a crocodile's mouth and it can't close it and stuff. That's what this guy looks like. I'm sorry to disturb you. Do you need some help with that? Uh, I don't know, but I'm not offering. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's enough. Let's uh, 
Oop, you dropped it. That's the best thing that you can do. He's he's not he's not going to uh, forget that the food is there. He'll come back for it later. Here's some very chubby Echis oscillatus. That cage needs to be cleaned too. Not much interest in uh, doing on the show for us today. Yep, oh, this one might be. Hello. I see you shed too. Oh yeah, you you bet. Aren't these beautiful? These, I think, are some of the mo more beautiful um, Echis because um, they have this nice chocolate color. What is that? Are we got a lump there? Huh? We got a lump there? Could be a lipoma. It's because I overfeed them. <clears throat> Here, and that one is out for view. Let's so the uh, March Palm Viper is out and about because I just fed it. You don't often see it, and it's really quite beautiful because it's got blues and greens in it. But it's a very, very shy snake. Um, these are from Central America. Um, very, very beautiful uh, species, albeit very, very shy. Uh, this one's been eating live food, uh, so you haven't been seeing it on cameras. It was actually out, so I thought we'd drop in real quick and have a quick uh, look at her. Athriatris marchi. March is palm, palm viper. Yeah, that's a treat. We definitely don't see it very often. <clears throat> okay, I see you. So here we are back in Echis land. These are the captive born uh, leucogasters. Here's the, what I consider to be the most beautiful one. Uh, aren't you lovely? You just got amazing colors. Now number two eats live food and number four eats live food, which sort of makes me think that they're males. Here's a, another female. There's another mouse eater. We're not going to strike. We're going to be shy and just eat that on our own. Okay, that's fine. <clears throat> All right, it's time to drop eggs on the floor and hopefully feed these yearling less of Sunda Island pit vipers. Yep, that looks like it's feeding. These are yearlings. They were born in May of 22, a little bit more than the yearlings. Remember, these were started with the arduous process of cannula feeding them baby food, then they switched to geckos. And then eventually I got them feeding on fuzzy mice. They're still quite skittish, of course, so I'm going to just take a quick peek at them and do what we need to do and move on. And there's three of these guys. Nope. No question about it, you wanted that, huh? Look at that color. Those are just amazing. I'm sad though that we didn't get any green ones from Big Blue, but she was bred with a Big Blue, uh, well, she's big and blue herself, and she bred with a male that was also blue. So, are we surprised? No, not really. Just disappointed. Um, 
these are the remainders. I rehomed, sold off uh, a lot of the others. And I think there was like 12 or so. Now, these are the ones that were born uh, not very long ago. And this particular one is the only one that started off on pink lace. And that's what she does. She just taps it. And uh, she seems to eat them. So we're not going to do disturb her. These are a month old. Now these other two clowns uh, um, are a different story. They're, we're not feeding them by giving them uh, candle of food. Uh, since I have some, some geckos, we're s starting them off uh, geckos, which is actually a fairly sizable meal for them. Because these are little tykes. But as you can see, uh, it works. And uh, it's a good day when I don't have to wrap my fingers around the little head, pointy head. So it'll eat it. It's just got all weirded out by the uh, vibration of the, the uh, drawer opening. Let me find one for this one. Size. Try to get the, the scrawnier geckos for it. Ah. All right. Well, I'll leave it. You'll eat it, maybe. It's embarrassed because it fell. <laughs> All right. So there's one more uh, critter to feed in here, and that's the sandworm. He is somewhere in his uh, hideout there. Uh, we will probe and see if we can find them. And hopefully don't play snake hockey like you did that one day. Like probing for landmines. Really, oh, I see a coil back there. Oh, 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 oh. All right, look. We went through this before. Don't get weirded out and bite the uh, hook. Uh, he came up like a sandworm, just you know, out of the movie Dune, and then disappeared when he didn't get uh, a mouthful of uh, a gecko. But he's bitten the um, the tongs before. Uh oh! So we're gonna have to go diving for a sandworm. Ah, here you go. Okay, you got him by the arm. Now, you guys don't see these guys because they're fossorial, which means that they they hide under the leaf litter and ground. But these are Angolan garter snakes. They're lapids. And we have no idea what their venom does. Uh, although I have friends from Africa that report that. Yeah, these will give you a nasty little bite with some neurotoxic symptomology and stuff uh, um, that may require you to spend some time in the emergency department uh, for support, but there's no antivenin that's effective, and it seems that they're mostly postsynaptic neurotoxins, and your body will rid, rid yourself of those. It will just take some time. Um, but... Uh, they're a very cool species. You don't see them often. Even when you have them, you don't see them often because they're under the substrate all the time. So you sometimes have to probe and get the little blighter to come out. Um, in this case, uh, he got the gecko by the arm and uh, we're going to close this now and let him do his thing and he will feed the female who actually does eat uh, uh, mice sometimes. She's a very picky eater, but we'll offer her something to eat. 
and you don't go probing for it because you just upset her and she doesn't eat then. So that's, uh, that's the uh, baby Insularis and the Angolan garter snakes.